Now recently I was browsing YouTube and on my recommendations page, a video from Steve Mould popped up where he was trying to create a transparent WERS pump or a spiral pump. Now this caught my eye because I'd never heard of these types of water pumps before, even though I later learned that these have been around for a very long time. Now this video sent me down a rabbit hole of just researching these types of pumps because I knew that I wanted to try to build one, not just to see if I could, but I wanted to try to take one of these water pumps and run a custom water cooling loop or at least cool a CPU. Mm, hit me again, 50,000 volts this time, I can take it. Now while reading up on the spiral pump, I learned that there's another variant of this pump called the coil pump. Now both the spiral pump and coil pump operate in pretty much the same way. The only difference is the spiral pump spirals the tubing inwards towards the outlet where the coil pump just kind of coils it up. Now while debating which one I wanted to depict to try to accomplish this task, I learned that the coil pump does have an advantage over the spiral pump. They're easier to make, and that's because on the spiral pump, as you spiral the tubing inwards towards the outlet in the center, the inner loops have a smaller circumference than the outer loops, and that's something you gotta account for if you want the pump to function right. Now because I knew that I was just gonna be using standard custom water cooling tubing with an ID of 10 millimeters and an OD of 13 millimeters, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to increase the cross-sectional diameter of the inner loops to account for this change in circumference. So I decided to go with the coil pump because on that one, they're all the same circumference and you don't need to account for any smaller loops. So with a rough idea of what I wanted to accomplish, I sat down in CAD and tried to draw up my water pump. So this is what I've come up with. Sorry about, sorry about all the dog hair. I tried to get most of it out of the water so you have to look at it, but uh, yeah, I have a golden retriever whose superpower is to lose all of his hair every single day and never go bald, but either way, I think it'll work. I had this 20 gallon tank in the back and it'll give us enough water that we shouldn't have to worry about a radiator. This thing, on the other hand, is probably the most important part of this whole setup. This is what I call the drum and it is gonna hold all of our tubing evenly spaced and at a constant circumference around the outside before we drop to the inside and pump it out. And I wanna position this basically in the middle about halfway down in the water. Now I thought the hardest part of this whole setup was finding a way to transfer the water from the moving side to the static side but then I remembered that pretty much all EK fittings and other manufacturers all swivel. So what I've done is mount a 45 on this side, a 90 on this side, and we should be able to turn this all day long without any leaks. And as you can see, I put this little drive hub here with a, a gear that I modeled in there that we're gonna use to spin this bad boy. Now to hold the drum, I have these two brackets that are gonna just sit on the edge of this fish tank. This one has a geared motor on it that's gonna drive our drum around, and then these screws are just here too tighten it down and make sure it doesn't slide around or hopefully keep it somewhat level. Tubing is just standard water cooling sizes. This is 1013. It's not from EK or anything. It's just cheap silicone tubing that I found. This is 10 foot plus a little bit extra than I think I'm gonna need. This is just gonna drop down through that hole and then we'll try to keep it from kinking and then we should be able to just wrap it around this little helix, helical channel that I cut in here. Okay, there's our tubing. I just printed a little clip just to hold down the end. Just gonna push this The drum itself just sits in this little V-channel that I have on both sides. And now I got it positioned, I can just move the gear back out to engage it. And for the outlet, I just took the standpipe out of my D5 pump, and we're going to use it to get in there to our 45. And I think the tubing will fit right over the edge here. A little tight, but shouldn't leak. Now for successful, and when I turn this on, you should be able to see the water move its way through the tubings and then hopefully out of the end here. We want to be able to spin this fast enough to get some decent water flow, but not so fast that the surface tension pulls the water over the top, and then we kind of lose the whole pumping action of the setup. Got the motor all powered up. So this is just a 15 RPM geared motor. Uh, hopefully it has enough torque to overcome that barb and that fitting, but we'll see here in a second. Should have put some more blue dye in it. This is like some simple EK dye. I was hoping you could see it better, but you can kind of see where the water is moving its way over. And you can kind of come down the tube now. Here we go. It's not doing too bad. I don't think our motor's getting hot. This is pumping a little bit better than I thought it would. You're gonna have the air gaps because of just how the pump operates. But when I squeeze the tube here, it's putting out some decent pressure because another thing I'm kind of concerned about is trying to push this water through the, the tiny little fins inside the water block. 
but I think it might do it. The biggest problem we're gonna have is this, it's gonna be pushing air through it as well. Alrighty, so this is, this is the big test. If we're able to push water through the hose and then through that water block and all the micro channels within it and then out of the outlet, we have a shot of cooling this CPU. Little trickle. That's working pretty good. We still got the air, but to be expected. Now I did take this block apart from the last time you've seen it and cleaned out all the gunk, because you remember in the last video, it, it, it didn't function the best, but now it's clean. So it should operate as good as, uh, as good as this old water block can. I mean, we got water flow. We should be able to keep the temperatures somewhere in check. So here's our setup. We have uh, a 7700K, which is pretty old at this point, but considering that the, if the article I read is to be believed, this pump, the first time it was written down in literature that it was used was like 1806. So uh, quite a bit newer. <laughs> right now there's no water flowing through this, so I'm trying to hurry. As you can see, we are throttling quite a bit. We're just, we're just idling really right now, but no water flow. Uh, we're gonna turn this on and just see if we can at least control the, the CPU and its stock configuration. We are showing 3.86 gigahertz right now. I'm gonna turn this on for things that start roasty toastying. Maybe, there we go. All right, so hopefully we'll be able to start moving some water through. I have this hooked up too. It's gonna be quite annoying because it has a low flow alarm, but it should give us an idea what the outflow temperature is. It does show about 395, 398 on the flow. So there is, there's enough flow to read. I thought the air bubbles would maybe kill it. You can see that we're doing something. So we, uh, we have dropped from all the way at the roof down to about 39. That's annoying. And we're no longer throttling it. Now this is just under idle, but at least we proved that this is better than absolutely nothing. <laughs> what are, what's the water temperature of our outgoing? 20, 21? What's the tank? What does that say? I can't see it. 18. I mean, at this point, this is pretty much a success in my book. We are keeping a CPU alive uh, at idle, but this pump, like I said, 1806 was the first time in the literature that I read in the article that I seen that this was described. And here it is in 2023 cooling, well, an old CPU, but a CPU nonetheless. Now let's see if we can run a stress test and see what happens. We're showing about 4.5 gigahertz. I'm just gonna turn on a little Ida 64. I mean, it's pretty obvious right now. You can see where we were when there was absolutely nothing running through the water block. Then when we turned on the coil pump, we stabilized. We bumped up a little bit. Uh, now that the stress test is running, we're at 4.5 gigahertz, 100% utilization. We're pretty stable at 49. So it's not really doing too bad. It's kind of impressive. A pump made out of just tubing and a bunch of 3D printed parts. And if you're wondering why I chose the size of the drum that I did, uh, it really just came down to the printer I used. This is a, the X1C carbon. So the build plate is 256 by 256 by 256. So I just went with a, one, a 250 millimeter drum just so it could print in one go. This really works pretty good. I'm very surprised. I mean, uh, we've only been running for a few minutes. It'll take decades to heat soak this entire fish tank at this point, but we have uh, been rock solid at 53, 50 degrees at 100% at stock speeds, 4.5 gigahertz. We could probably crank this up a whole bunch and it wouldn't be a problem until the tank heated up. But we could, we could put a radiator in it. This thing could, this thing could do a radiator. Just surprised at how little water flow through that water block is enough to keep everything in check. And I'm really surprised that the air that goes through with every little cycle isn't doing more uh, kind of damage the situation. We're just kind of running along pretty smooth. All in all, I think this actually turned out quite a bit better than I had expected, uh, which is funny, but really kind of, kind of cool. Something different. If you have any idea of what you want me to try next with this thing, do you want me to run a whole loop? Should I make a... <laughs> hardline version of it. I don't know, you let me know what you think about this. If you have know of any other crazy old ancient water pumps out there that you wanna see me try to make, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a lot of fun and I'll see you next time. 399 liters an hour, not bad.